were born here. He moved here. This is a man that has endured real torture in a foreign setting. So who's the real hero? I would hope people would listen to our heroes. Alan Cox. On 100.7 WMMS. How about that David Njoku, huh? Dude. He's my new favorite player now. How about Seems that? Nice. Yeah. Very, very, very nice. Well, the, they're usually nice, but you kind of never know where you're getting them in their day either. Yeah. So that's true of anybody, I guess. But yeah, nice dude. Wow, one of nine kids. And just Jesus. gigantic. <laughs> a gigantic. Just a gigantic. Why, why, does that, why does that? It doesn't surprise me, but it's just when you see it in person, it's it's just you because he's always standing next to other people that are also gigantic. Yeah, I'm not so often standing him, talking to a football player. When you see him standing next to Carmen Angelo, you're like, this is not the same <laughs> kind of thing. These are not the same <laughs> m- yeah. mode of human. Right. Carmen Angelo. <laughs> Did they snake him in there after? I mean, Carmen was out there. He's like, I'll walk you out, but also, yeah. So yeah, I'll Carmen. walk you out. Yeah. My blood is half marinara sauce. <laughs> Still the winner of the Alan Cox Show hot dog eating contest, Carmen Angelo from WTAM 1100. I got more money here for you in about 10 minutes. Uh, Listen for that next keyword. This week, your last week of days to get some of this money before we go into the Memorial Day holiday weekend, but you got about 13 chances every one of those days, so still plenty of opportunities to grab some money if you haven't yet. Guardians will play tonight. We'll dip out a couple of minutes early because it's a 6-10 start uh, around the corner at Progressive Field. Francisco Lindor and the Mets are in town. Who else is on the Mets? Keith Hernandez? No. Oh. Retired for um, 40 years. 30 years. Daryl Strawberry? Again. Ah. Uh, Being silly. Who plays for the Mets? I think they got the, the polar bear. Pete. Uh, okay. What's his name? I, I don't Pete know. Alonzo, is that his name? Pete Alonzo, yeah. first baseman. Okay. Why they call him the polar bear? Because he's a white guy? He's a big old white guy. Ah, all right. Like a polar bear. All right. But there are a lot of white guys. Yeah, but he's the How first, did he get a, polar bear? I don't know. Oh. I just know they call him that. All right. Uh, who's starting for the Mets? Tyrone Taylor. Brett Batty. There's a baseball player named Batty. Harrison Bader. There's a baseball player named Bader. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's tonight, 610, and then 610 tomorrow night, and then they'll wrap that series with an afternoon or on Wednesday, and then the Guardians hit the road, play the Angels on the West Coast and the Rockies on the less West Coast. Over on the East Coast, uh, if you listen to us on iHeartRadio, in the Carolinas, we're well represented in the Carolinas, as you can see. If you really pay attention to our Bureau Chief map back here. The Carolinas, both north and south. You know, there's a lot of people who say, why do we need two Dakotas? But you never hear those same people say, why do we need two Carolinas? Because the reason is pretty self-evident. A Carolina divided against itself cannot stand. Whereas a Dakota uh, probably could. Uh, So we've got Amanda in Goldsboro, North Carolina, and Greg in Greensboro. They love themselves a borough in North Carolina. James is in Raleigh. Mary was just there. Mm -hmm. And, boy, it's got to make you feel good that the Senate of North Carolina uh, voted to ban people from wearing masks in public for any reason at all. Hell yeah. (laughs) Because, as we all know, freedom begins with banning articles of clothing. Uh, They say it makes it harder to identify robbers. (laughs) Now, I can't imagine that the governor of North Carolina would sign this into law. Uh, But it has gotten as far as the North Carolina Senate, who uh, almost um, uh, voted unanimously on this, or at least along party lines. Um, And again, this just goes back to... This is your chance to bet with the buzzard. What's happening here? Uh, This goes back to uh, whatever nonsensical reasons people have for caring if people are wearing masks in public. I mean, is this going to backfire on the Republicans? Because they're like, 
Oh, now we can't do our Ku Klux Klan stuff. Well, but this is the thing: is it's, it's kind of mask at the hood, Bill. It's oh. it's only Grow ever up. loophole. <laughs> yeah, Grow up. it's only ever important to people when there's protests going on, right? So they're like, well. During COVID, we needed masks. Again, it's no one's business. There's a lot of immunocompromised people walking around who still wear masks. Mm -hmm. There are people who have a variety of reasons. I was reading about this one woman who lives in North Carolina, and she goes, look, it might seem silly to a lot of people, but I wear a mask because I have really bad skin. And it's a real pain in the ass to put makeup on, and I just don't want to do it. And I shouldn't have to because it's my face. Right. And I <laughs> should be able to do whatever I want to do with it. But uh, it's pretty wild. Pretty wild. So they go, well, it's going to, it's more important to us that we can identify protesters. Uh, and frankly, my thought is if you're going to protest anything, and I'm very pro protester, but if you're going to protest anything, Put your face out there. Trouble is, is that people don't feel comfortable protesting enough. That's how things are moving um, ever so quickly to the right, is that people don't feel um, engaged with their right to protest. So they cover their faces because they're like, here comes the tear gas, here comes the cops, even though we're not doing anything illegal. And so, again, I, I can't imagine that the the governor would sign this into law, but you never know. Who the hell knows? Who's going to do what? You know, you'll notice, I was talking about I have uh, Daniel Stern on the show tomorrow, and he was, of course, he and Joe Pesci, famously the Wet Bandits in Home Alone. They there didn't we wear masks. These guys, they go into a kid's house, they go into a neighborhood, full open face. I, I think there was maybe like one scene in the movie where they put masks on, but that was just because they were, I don't know, I, I seem to remember him, you know, pulling a scarf over his face or something, but they were just going, um... Do you remember? I, I think, think that was so. in the second one. Yeah, was not it? in the first one. Yeah. Okay. That character, I guess. But, you know, Joe Pesci, he put all, all his eggs in the dressing up like a cop basket at the beginning of the movie. Hey, I'm just checking in the houses. I don't need to recount the chapter and verse of Home Alone to you. But uh, those guys were out there in a, uh, what would seem to be a very closely guarded suburban neighborhood. No mask. Not worried. Of course, I was uh, early 90s. That was before everybody had a ring camera and, uh, you know, were far less surveilled back then, too. Does your sister still live in Houston? Uh, for a few more weeks. They got to get, man, if you've been paying attention to what's going on in Houston, they must be really happy that they're getting yeah, the hell out of there because, pretty, holy Christ. They're pretty stoked. Wow. What's I mean, under normal circumstances, I think Toledo, they'd be happy. So, I mean, it's. <laughs> no, I mean, what is happening in Houston? Well, they had 100 mile per hour winds and they have a million people without power because it's that Texas grid. And they've got mosquitoes. Ugh, I and hate so, mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are the deadliest creature on the planet. Ugh. And they come with the warm water. They come with the warm temperatures. And it's no joke, boy, these mosquitoes. And, again, if you've been paying attention to what's going on down there in Houston, you know, and, again, that's a city where there's there's no place for water to go, right? They paved over all the wetlands there in Houston. It's so humid. It's so humid, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's like you're just sitting in a pressure cooker the whole time. But... They're getting Ooh, uh, swarms of them. Yeah, they're getting inundated <laughs> with mosquitoes. Like we get the midges and the mayflies up here. They're getting inundated with mosquitoes. And something like that, by the way, is only going to get worse just as the weather generally gets warmer everywhere. Mosquitoes. Yeah. It feels like that's the that's the most dangerous thing that people aren't thinking about is mosquitoes. Um, and so they're getting them really bad down there. About a million people without power, at least in the immediate aftermath of those storms. I don't know if that's still the case. But they had massive storms going through there. Just like, you know, rainfall to the extent where, like, a, a lot of parts of that metro region were getting flooded. And, but you got to hand it to people who are in those places for life, boy. They're just like, yep, yeah, I'm from here. I'm never leaving. <laughs> And that's true of anybody. I mean, if you grew up somewhere, you wouldn't be like, oh, I'm not, you know, not moving just because we got some bad weather. But 
And it's and listen, Houston is one of those places that's, uh, you know, mosquitoes aren't foreign to them because it's a very flat area. But there's no, again, the, the reason that a place like that floods, there's no place for the water to go. And so, you know, the, the ditches and the, the drain water things that they have in Houston aren't enough to cra- catch all this water. But where do you get your mosquitoes? Standing water. And if you've never seen water stand. Impressive. Impressive <laughs> and terrifying. So, you know, we're getting, it's true of Ohio, it's true of everywhere, that places are getting hotter earlier in the year. And when you get a massive storm come through like that, where it just gets wetter, then you're going to get mosquitoes. So not the wetter, the better? I mean, this is the wrong amount of wet (laughs) down there in Houston. Uh I think. I mean, I wouldn't want to be. You want to be smacking your neck? I mean, oh, my God. I hate bugs. It's one of the main reasons I'm inside over outside is bugs. But I mean, like when you're, if, if you've ever been uh, camping or even if you've slept Just with like a window open and you had, you feel that little buzz, that little high pitched buzz near your ear and you, oh God. It's not okay. I you just know. hate the idea that things can even look like a bug that aren't a bug. I hate that. Things can look like a bug yeah. that aren't a bug, like a Volkswagen? Uh, perhaps. Oh. I'm just thinking like, you see like a little crumb or something, and you're like, is that a bug? Like late at night or something like that. A crumb. Oh, yeah. something you mistook for a bug. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I see. I don't have screens in my window in my bedroom. And oh. I asked the, my landlord, I was like, hey, are there are the, are the screens somewhere? Because it looks like they used to have them at some point. And he was like, yeah, if no. They had, if that used to be a daycare, I sure as hell hope they that's had screens said, in the windows. And they're like, no, those are custom made windows. So you can't put a screen in there. And I was like, so I just can't open my windows. And they're like, no, you can open the windows. I was like, okay, but. Someone's going to get in, or a bird, or my yep. cat's going to get out, or bugs mainly, where I'm like, I don't want to leave my windows open for too long, because I'm telling you, man, I mean, it's not bad right now, but like if a bee comes in or whatever, like I don't want to be messing with that. Or I'm like really afraid of bird or a bat if I would leave my windows <laughs> a open at bat. night. I don't know. Yeah. What are you, living in a cave? A raccoon? I mean, the garbage cans are right outside my window. Yeah. A homeless no. person? Without a screen, literally anything could just come through your window. And they were like, yeah, no. Not a big deal. Just leave them open. I, like, I mean, I, I would have here. to. Th- I would have to think that um, it's not an unsolvable problem. I would have to think that there's something you could put in that window that would. I mean, I'm sure think. I could buy a screen and yeah. just like set it in there. But they're right. like, no, those are custom made windows that didn't come with screens. Yeah, I think well, you're gonna have to the, the, YouTube how to make a custom screen. I was gonna <laughs> say custom windows probably had some kind of custom. Are they like the old like wood window sills? Not and, at all. Oh, they're okay. like um. I don't even know what type of material. What's that material that's like on the outside Glass. of a house? That's <laughs> siding, vinyl, plasticky. vinyl. Maybe if, maybe it's like vinyl, but they, they're it's like a crank and they they go out. Okay. They oh open yeah. Out to the that's how like, our windows were side. growing up. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very strange setup. So they like they open like these are vertical windows that open out. Yeah, it's a bay window. Gotcha. It's a big bay window in the front. Oh, and window they, is bay. And they <laughs> crank the windows, the only, not the middle two, just the outsides yeah. open up to the outside. Right. Well, is it anywhere near your bed? No. So a homeless person couldn't just, like, reach their arm in and grab and your me? ankle? No, 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 no. My bed's oh. not that close. But, I mean, it's not a huge room, like, a couple steps away. Plus, you don't want just the garbage waft coming right in. Right. You know, yeah. hot New York air with garbage riding on it. Ugh. Right. Imagine that, boy. So, yeah, some mosquito eggs wait up to a year to hatch. What are they waiting so, for? Well, uh, mosquitoes aren't dumb. They know what's up. <laughs> They're like, hey, I'll come back to this later on. When you least expect it, I'll come through your bay window, and then we'll see what's going on. Yeah, I got money here. It's 1000 bucks, as promised. Shot for you to grab some money from the buzzard bookie. So listen closely, and good luck. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Money, that's money. Enter it now at WMMS.com.
You know they got another couple of dudes in Turks and Caicos with the ammo? <laughs> I don't know if these guys don't read the news or what, but... They keep scooping up these American dudes who are vacationing in Turks and Caicos, and they keep finding ammo in their travel bags. One dude got busted a couple of weeks ago, then a second guy. There are up to five Americans who have been busted for ammo in Turks and Caicos. That's not even that many. Yeah, but after the first guy, I mean, you're going to Turks and Caicos, right? So that's going to be like a news story. And then you go, ooh, I, I got to make sure. And then there was a second. Yes, and but second. Are, people aren't paying attention to important news stories. Well, they're not going to be paying attention to this. I'm surprised they haven't caught 50 people with this. Hmm. There are that many people traveling with ammo in their bag and they don't know it? I mean, maybe. Yeah. I got to tell you, though, I think it's another example of why the TSA has also got their head up their ass, too. Because I just remember when I was traveling to the Virgin Islands years ago, and I had a scissors in my backpack, and they didn't even catch it until Puerto Rico. And I was like, like full full size scissors, full or size like scissors. Male scissors. No, 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 full size scissors because like my backpack was just like my, you know, I had all my stuff in it, like pens and scissors and notepads and things like that, because I was traveling. It was a it was a thing for the show at the time. Didn't even catch it until Puerto Rico. And they're like, you can't have this. I'm like, I just went through two airports and nobody said a friggin' thing. Went through my bag because we flew like Pittsburgh to Detroit or something else to Miami. And uh, I was like, okay. I said, you can have the scissors. I'm, I'm happy to buy another scissors. But um, yeah, they've gotten five guys in Turks and Caicos for possession of ammo. And they really kind of threatened the first couple of guys because um, it's not something they take lightly. But you got to figure maybe by the time you get to the third and the fourth and the fifth, they go, all right. <laughs> these idiots. <laughs> yeah. How much, uh, how much jail space do we have for these morons coming in here who can't figure it out? Prohibited for citizens of Turks and Caicos to possess a firearm or ammunition, but they used to be able to pay a fine. But they changed that. And now there's a mandatory minimum of 12 years for bringing ammunition into Turks and Caicos. And so these guys that are down there, you know, they let the families go back or whatever, but the guys are like, um, am I really looking down the barrel, if you'll pardon the pun, of uh, a dozen years in Turks and Caicos? Yeah, after I read the story about the first guy, I would think, hmm. Because these are just people like getting back on a cruise ship or getting off a cruise ship and they go through the bag. 72-year-old Michael Evans, 72, was arrested for carrying seven rounds of 9 millimeter ammo. Um, a guy from Oklahoma uh, did it. Of course, they all say it was an honest mistake, and there's no reason to doubt them. It's not like these people are part of a ring to smuggle ammo in the Turks and Caicos. But still, there's all these, any country you go to, it's kind of incumbent upon you, if you're a traveler, to find out what the restrictions are, and I'm always surprised at how little uh, research people do when they travel. I don't know. I have no idea why that would surprise you. Well, like, because I think there's, I think there's a lot of people who nobody's researching anything outside. People are barely researching hotels. All I hear about is people doing their own research, not for on this. dumb crap not, like drinking baby's blood no, in a pizza shop basement. But okay, all I'm saying is I don't know what percentage of people are like regular international travelers. And if you weren't, if it wasn't something you did regularly, I would think you might get a little bit of information. But you also you're... probably think I'm leaving from a cruise in America. Yeah, but you're also... I don't have... This is... I'm in Florida. I'm just saying by, by virtue of traveling, there's already all of this administrative stuff you have to do. You're doing... You're checking your flight times and cruise times and things like that. So I would think in the mix there would be like, hey, anything we should look out for on Turks and Caicos? No, not once. Wow. That would never have crossed my mind. Huh. To, to look at laws and other, no. Really? Just don't do anything illegal. But you're a type A yeah, person. Yeah, but if you're. Yeah, but you don't, that's my point. You don't know. You know what's illegal. None of these people knew that ammo, they're like, oh, 
If you're an, because if you're an American, you are a traveler though, Mary. So you know that you're not going to have something ridiculous in your bag. That you, no, I know that. But yeah. what I'm saying is, is that I don't think. I think people who travel do so like the bare minimum to prepare to travel. Okay. All I'm saying is, when it comes to ammunition, you know, so many Americans are so steeped in the ammo sexual mindset. It doesn't even occur to them that the rest of the world is not like that. They go, oh, I just forgot a couple of bullets in my bag. And depending on where you're going, they go, I yeah, believe them. we're going to put you in. No, I believe them too. That's precisely why you got to, I don't know. I don't know why everybody's not checking their bag before they leave. Well, someone's... You pull it out of the closet. You dump it upside down. People are messaging me saying, you don't understand how small ammo can get and it can get lost in the crevices but i don't think this is like one or two bullets like they have a lot right well the 72 year old guy just had a few rounds of nine millimeter ammo all i'm saying is you know if you're somebody who shoots a lot Mm -hmm. you know if you're terrified to go anywhere without a gun you know this again you said these are people on cruises so it would not occur to me. I'm in Florida or I'm in New York. I'm not I'm not going but to another country. I'm in America on an American ship. But you're going but but you have to bring your passport to go on I a understand. cruise. I when get any, that, but my any point port- is I guarantee they're not even thinking about it because they don't have to go through the same No, kind but of they tell you customs. any port of entry from a cruise, you have to abide by that country's laws. If you get off in the Bahamas, you get off in Jamaica. It's not like you just go, I'm American. I can do what I want. I know that's how a lot of people here think. but they. I would f- say that's how most people think. Well, I, and honestly, five F with the bull, you get the none. horns, I guess. I'm just saying I would think that people should, uh, I don't know, people should do a little bit more diligence. I bet these people are not going to make that mistake again when the guy gets out in 12 years <laughs> and his wife's remarried, <laughs> his <laughs> kids are in college. I mean- Listen, it does suck, yes. It sounds like honest mistakes, top to bottom. But still, you know, they're like, hey, I can't believe we have to tell adults this, but check your luggage. Because you do. You literally have to tell Americans, check your luggage for stray ammunition. They don't have to tell any citizen of any other country that. That's why this is the greatest country on the planet. (laughs) She did it. I think it's the greatest country in America, for sure. I tell you what, Alan, I never really thought that I'd be the kind of guy to carry a gun everywhere, but it has become a thing since I started doing food delivery for a living. I do not leave home without it. I go into some pretty sketchy areas, and I've had crackheads try to sell me batteries and (laughs) all kinds of good stuff. Yeah, love you, bye. How much are they selling the batteries for? Like car batteries or like double A's? Depends. Hey, bro, I got these double A's for you. Ah, I need triple A's. God damn America it. America first. America first. Get that through your head, dude. America first. America first. You heard that before? What? America first. America first. What the hell, man? Dude. America first. America first. To all of you, let me explain one damn thing. America, America, America. Dude, you understand? America, America, America. My point is, America's first. America, America, America. What the hell, man? Goblins, no! Goblins, no! This is it. Everybody get ready! America first! America first! Get get that through your head, dude! America first! America first! You you heard that before? What? Hmm. I've got to take a break. Ooh. Um, when I come back, I'm going to give you a shot to get yourself to Hawaii. Now, check your bags for ammunition. I know it's an American state. I understand. I'm just saying, in general, when you travel, um, it might be a, a good idea to do. You don't want anybody uh, rifling through things. You don't want anybody looking for You don't want anything to get uh, 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 confiscated from you. Confiscated. Ah. Uh, Hey, I've got a water bottle with three squirts left in it. Ah, you're going to throw that out. No, a uh, trip to Hawaii. Mary's been there. She'll tell you all about it. Uh, Five-night trip for two, 1000 bucks cash, courtesy of Kona Brewing Company. It's one of the different ways that you can get uh, qualified for this trip. So we'll do that coming back.